And we're going to do an integrated rate law problem. And I want you to be able to see all the buttons I'm pushing on my calculator exactly at the same time. So it could help you if you ever are getting stuck. So you be given an equation where you are going to have only a single reactant. And then you're going to be given some data. It's going to say some time. And then it's going to say the concentrations according to that time. It is very important to notice uh, one quick thing is the unit of time. It is usually seconds, but sometimes it is minutes and very rarely, but could happen. It could be hours. So uh, I noticed, okay, it's seconds. All right, I'm needing to graph this. So I'm going to use my graphing calculator. I have a TI-83 right here. And if I go to stat and then to edit, I have uh, my columns. And I already have some data in here. So if I go to memory right here, uh, the easiest way to do this, and then I just hit clear all lists. Now I can scroll down or I can just hit the four button and then hit enter. And then I've cleared my lists. So now if I hit stat and edit, there they're clear. An important part of this is to realize that we have four columns. We have L1, L2, L3, and L4. It is important to make sure that you are understanding which column is supposed to represent what. So my L1 is going to be my time. My L2 is going to be my concentration. And that's initially what I'm going to be placing in. So notice on my example here, this can happen. These are out of order. Don't get trapped into writing this as your L1 and typing this in as your L2. The time's always got to be my L1. So this is my L1 and this is my L2. Very important. So here I go. I'm going to plug these numbers in. Very important to make sure that you are accurately placing the numbers in your columns. Usually a mistake uh, is due to placing the values incorrectly. There I am. Now, I need two more columns. So I need to have a little extra understanding of how this works because I want to find out which one has a linear relationship. So my concentration is always going to be my zero order. My, uh, my third column is going to relate to my first order, and my fourth column is going to relate to my second order. So having a little extra understanding does help. So I need to have natural log of the concentration for L3, and I need inverse the concentration for L4. So how I do that, instead of calculating that, I can let it do the work for me. So I want this entire column to be the natural log of these values. So if I hit highlight the column and then I hit enter, now I have a cursor down on the bottom. I hit natural log and then you'll notice at the buttons above uh, the numerical buttons, there's L1s, L2s, L3s, L4s, all the way through L6. So if I hit second and L2, I'm taking the natural log of my concentrations. I hit enter and it fills in. Then I go up to L4, hit enter. And I take 1 divided by L2. And that fills in. And those are my inverse values. So my goal now is to plot this. So I'm going to plot it either zero order, first order, or second order. So how do we do that? Well, what we need to do is go to stat plot. And you need to make sure that your plots are set up correctly. So I have L1, L2, that's zero order. L1, L3, first order. L1, L4, uh, second order. Notice that it's off, off, on. Uh, I like to start at the beginning. So this is on right now. I can either go and turn that off or I can just hit four, the button four. Hit all plots off. So that's done. So go back to set plot, see how they're all off. So I'm going to go into plot one. And I'm going to turn it on, making sure it's L1, L2. I like it not having it just the points, but having uh, a linear attachment to that. So I hit on, and now I need to graph it. So I'm going to hit graph. Now you can't see the data yet, so you have to hit zoom. And now if you scroll all the way down, it says zoom stat. Well, instead of scrolling all the way down, if I were going to do that again, I would just hit 9 because zoom stat is 9. And there I am. Ah, it's a curved relationship. 
that is not a linear relationship, so it's not zero order. So back, go back to snap plot, turn off plot one. I just go up, I can maneuver right through the plots right on top. So I go up to plot two, plot on, graph, zoom, nine. Oh, it's a straight line. That should be first order. But I want to make sure that I didn't make a mistake. So if I turn this one off and turn plot three on, enter on, graph, zoom, nine, ah, it's curved. So I know that it's first order. So now I need to write the rate law. So rate law simply is rate equals your rate constant times the reactant. The order will go to the upper right as an exponent. So if this is zero order, I get rid of that and rate just equals K. If it's first order, I just leave it. And if it's second order, I put a two. So in this case, it's first order, so I'm done. That's it. Rate constant. The rate constant is my K. So I need to calculate that. Well, K, the rate constant, is going to be a very important part of my relationship. It's my slope. So how do I find my slope? I'm going to let my calculator help me with that. So if I go to stat and I go to calc, here it is, line rig. I'm going to allow the y equals mx plus b equation to help me find the slope. m is my slope. There it is. a is my slope. So I hit 4. And here's the tricky part. I know that it's first order. So when this pops up and it says line rig, ax plus b, and then the cursor's flashing. If you hit enter, it will default to your first plot. So what you need to do is plug in the plot you want. So in this case, I know that it was first order. So I wanted L1, L3. If it was second order, I want L4 here. So this is how you have to do it. Second L1, comma, L3. I hit enter. And there is my slope. You need to understand because it's a negative slope to begin with. We have to take the opposite of that. So it'll be 0 0.00693. What are my units? Well, if we take a look up above, here is the key part to this. Rate is molarity over seconds. This is already concentration. So what I need is this side right here to equal this side. So because I already have molarity, I don't need it. So this definitely needs some time. I need time in here. But if this was second order, I'd have a 2 here, and that's too many, or a 3 or 4, and I'd have more than I need. So here's my rule of thought, is I take, you need to invert it and see how many you need to get rid of. So for example, I'm going to make this up. If you had this, this is totally made up. What's my unit of K? To get it to molarity over seconds, I need to get rid of four of these five. So I invert, invert molarity times my time. And I do one less than the overall over order. So that'd be a four because this equals 5. You get rid of them. If this equaled 7, these would be 6s. So in this case, because it's already a 1, 1 less than 1 is 0, these cancel. So all I have left is inverse time. So it's either 1 over seconds or seconds inverse. And that's all I need for my calculator. The rest of this, actually, I can utilize uh, any calculator. I don't need a graphing calculator. So let's talk about half-life. Now, on your equation sheets, they give you a half-life equation for first order, and it looks like this, but I want to show you where we get that from. So right here, you just plug in the K value, and, and you're good to go. But let's talk about Y equals MX plus B. So if I have this equation right now, and I, I just had this graph, and this is what it looks like, 
what's my Y, what's my M, what's my X, what's my B? Well, uh, my Y is natural log. My M is my slope, and I want the opposite of that. My X is my time. And then B is the initial starting point on your Y. So at zero time, it's zero concentration. So I'm going to plug it into that equation. This is called the integrated rate law. If this was a second order, then I would have constant one inverse concentration, one over concentration, zero time. If it was zero order, it would just be concentration, concentration, zero time. So what's a half-life? It's half the amount of compound. How long does it take to get half of what you started with? So if I work backwards here, I know that I have this value for my k. I don't know my time, so what's my half-life? plus the initial amount. My initial amount is right here. So this is the initial amount. So I want half of that. So in this case, it'd be that value. Well, if I calculate that all, I would subtract natural log over here and then divide it my half-life equals 100 seconds. Where does this come from? Well, if you did this generically, maybe you know this, maybe you don't, and you have half of what you started with, when you subtract natural log, it's like dividing natural logs. And if you take natural log of 2, you get 0.693. By dividing that, you're actually, or subtracting it, you're actually creating it uh, into a natural log of, of 2. So that's where you get half-life. All right, final step. How long would it take for 67% of this to react? That's what that means when it's complete. Well, I can't talk about what's gone. I can only talk about what's there. So I need to understand that 33% of it's remaining. So I just plug it in. Please understand, this is the now, this is the beginning, this is what you have presently. So what I have is 33% of my original amount. Just following this, plug in my K. How much time it's going to take. And then I multiply by the original amount. Again, if I plug this in, I will do this once, point so natural log of 0.33 times 0.1, I know that's not complicated math, subtracted by natural log of 0.1, and then divide it by negative 0 0.00693. And I get roughly 160 seconds. That, that should make sense because... 50% of it, it takes 100 seconds. So it should take more time for 67% of it to be completed. So that is one example of how to utilize our calculator uh, in a graphing manner to help us determine integrated rate laws.